Good morning, you guys. I hope this Sunday morning is going swimmingly for you. Um, I was just sitting here listening to Jamie Foxx's rendition of Bill Withers' song, Grandma's Hands, and he sings an a cappella version of it that is just striking. It's striking, you guys. Oh, I just listened to it as many times as until Instagram goes, yeah, girl, you have listened to that, um, that little, <laughs> that little highlight, um, far too many times. Now you just go, there's no sound. Um, but the reason why I love the song is because of the imagery in the song. Um, the imagery is so vibrant. It's so, it's so visual. Like I see it. Um, he talks about grandma's hands, you know, played the tambourine so well. Grandma's hands, you know, um, they would ache and sometimes swell, but she soothed the unwed mother. And I just, I love the realness of it. I love how it shows up and I love, it makes me so proud of the stories that have gone into making me me. I, it makes me think about the people and the, it makes me proud to be a black woman. It makes me proud to be of the African diaspora. It makes me proud um, of all of the wonderful people who have shown up in my life and created legacy filled stories and experiences that were happening unaware to me. So, and, and, and reason why I'm saying I love, listen, I'm so proud to be a black woman and so proud to be of this, uh, of this particular ilk of people who have survived some serious stuff is because one thing in the black culture, I don't care if it landed in the Bahamas, if it landed in Puerto Rico, if it landed in the United States of America, it, there's a, a way of deep abiding love and support that we have had to show up for one another that it is it is rich you guys it is rich and deep and i'm blessed to be a part of it and so i just wanted to celebrate that and tell you about it my aunt and uncle i remember the first time i came to the united states i was roughly seven years old i, I don't recall ever coming to america before that if it happened it was outside of my memory and Holland, Michigan, and probably Detroit were probably the places that I came. I, I, I don't really, I just recall Holland, Michigan. It, it's a small little Dutch town in Michigan. If you're black and you live in Holland, you're probably related to Shea. <laughs> it's, it's very, very small. But my aunt and uncle, I know I clown Auntie Joyce a lot and because she, she gives material just in her living. She gives you material. If you are any, like any little bit comedic, she's gonna give you like probably enough material to last you for years, years. You don't, it's nothing even has to happen. Mm -mm, nothing, um, just listen to her. But as much as I clown her, she is a lovely, lovely soul. So <clears throat> my aunt and uncle Charles, they, they love God and for real and what I love about them and their loving of God is they love therefore people and they never just want to say I love you they show up as the arms legs and hands of God in people's lives all the time without a lot of fanfare just that's how we do you just love on people you support people you lift them up my Uncle Charles and Auntie Joyce have been a part of Teen Challenge for years. They have let random people live in their house and as they support them, try to get them on their feet. People that truly, I would have been like, uh, nah, bruh, you ain't living here. No, my aunt and uncle were like, yeah, absolutely. Now here are the rules. Here are the rules and you better abide by these rules. But I believe in you. I am believing in you. My Uncle Charles tells this one story of one time when they were going on a vacation and they left one of the Teen Challenge guys at their house by himself and this was a man who had had a history of drug addiction and and thievery because that comes with drug addiction at a certain point you run out of money but you still need the drugs right i get it and my uncle charles and auntie joyce went on vacation and my uncle charles told me he said he looked him in the face and he said now look i'm trusting you this is your house this is your home you treat it accordingly. We will be back and I expect it to be a beautiful time for you. 
listen, when my Uncle Charles told me that, I was like, for real? Because I would have been like, look, drug addict, this is what I'm gonna need you to do. I'm gonna need you to find yourself a halfway house in between because I'm gonna hold you hostage to the worst decisions you have ever made in your life. And even though I see you swimming to the top, trying to be free, I'm not gonna let you be free of that. I'm gonna hold you hostage. Yeah, that's an ugly thing. But I probably would have done that. I probably would have. But for having an aunt like Auntie Joyce and an uncle like Uncle Charles. And uh, they left and they went on vacation. And when they came back, their house was cleaned and sparkling. It was better than how they left it. And my Uncle Charles said that the guy told him he felt so pressured and so convicted to do right by these people who believed in him that it called him up to be his best. And even one night he had a particularly hard night and he did something like he locked himself in his room. Like this man, <laughs> I tell you what, people believing in you and offering you just love and support, it is transformative. This man felt called up to be his highest and best because my aunt and uncle believed in him and trusted him with something that nobody on this planet would ever trust him and he knew that and he said when he had a hard night when the drugs were calling his name he locked himself in his room because he was not going to defile this belief in him that my uncle extended to him though he did not earn it I don't know y'all that's just a story that I was thinking of thinking about today and it made me proud it made me happy I hope it does the same for you you guys have a beautiful day peace